For today's case, we ask, does the satanic temple have good lawyers? And can they succeed in their defamation suit against Newsweek? Hi, everyone. Welcome to Uncivil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. As always, I'll hope you enjoy this legal education content, and today will be the day I earn your subscription. But first, a huge shout out to this video's supporter, Aura. Aura is a company that can help you with identity theft protection and credit monitoring. When your personal information leaks online, you're at a higher risk of credit card fraud or identity theft, which means that your money and your reputation could be at risk right now. Aura scans the dark web looking for these threats and alerts you if it finds anything. With an easy to use online dashboard and alerts that are sent straight to your phone, Aura keeps you in control and guides you through solving any issues. So how can you protect yourself? Well, go to aura.com slash uncivil law to protect yourself from hackers, scammers, and nosy advertising companies, among other threats. When you use my link below, r.com slash uncivil law, you'll get up to 40% off on all plans, plus a money back guarantee for new subscribers if you're not fully satisfied, which I believe you will be. r.com slash uncivil law to help protect you against the growing threats of credit card fraud and identity theft protection in this increasing digital age. They say Tannic Temple is a church that is headquartered in Salem, Massachusetts. The Satanic Temple is controversial at times, to be sure, and has its problems. Presently, it has its problems with a few of its former members, who it alleges has defamed it through Facebook. But this has escalated, because now the Satanic Temple is going after Newsweek for reporting on the defamation. So it's the Satanic Temple versus Newsweek. Who has the better lawyers? Let's get started with this. The Satanic Temple venerates, but does not worship, the biblical adversary as a Promethean icon against tyranny. The Satanic Temple draws inspiration from a romantic Satanism library movement, in which depicts Satan as a revolutionary hero who stood up against impossible odds to seek justice in egalitarianism for himself and others in the pursuit of Enlightenment error ideas, particularly rationalism and personal liberty. The Satanic Temple mission is to propagate the seven tenets. So this are the, these are the tenets of the satanic temple. One should strive to act with compassion and empathy towards all creatures in accordance with reason. The struggle for justice is ongoing and necessarily pursuit should prevail over laws and institutions. One's body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone. The freedom of others should be respected, including the freedom to offend. To willfully and unjustly encroach upon the freedom of another is to forego one's own. Belief should conform to one's best scientific understanding of the world. One should take care never to distort scientific facts to fit one's belief. People are fallible. If one makes a mistake, one should do one's best to rectify it and resolve any harms that might have been caused. And finally, every tenet is a guiding principle designed to inspire nobility and action and thought. The spirit of compassion, wisdom, and justice should always prevail over the written or spoken word. Okay, well, that's what the Satanic Temple believes. To that end, the Satanic Temple engages in various charitable activities, like donating women hygiene products under the Menstruate with Satan program. Okay. It holds weekly services, has structured ministry programs, has sobriety programs, and offers after-school care. On October the 29th of 2021, Newsweek published an article about the Satanic Temple entitled, Orgies, Harassment, Fraud, Satanic Temple Rocked by Accusations, Lawsuit. Okay, let's read more. Obstensibly, the article was about the Satanic Temple's lawsuit against some of its former members who have hacked two of the Satanic Temple's Facebook pages and directed false and defamatory statements about the, the Satanic Temple directly to the Satanic Temple's audience. The, the article states, Orgies, harassment, fraud, Satanic Temple rocked by accusations lawsuit. The headline indexes the false and defamatory allegations that the Satanic Temple engages in sexual misconduct, orgies, 
which isn't necessarily sexual misconduct, incidentally. But okay, are they saying it's necessarily success? Are, are, are they saying it's necessarily sexual misconduct? I mean, I don't know. Harasses his former members and engages in financial fraud. The article states in 2018, the Satanic Temple sued Twitter for temporarily suspending the account of co-founder Lucien Gravis. The statement is false on three fronts. Okay, so Twitter suspends this account. All right, so it's false. How is it false? To say that the Satanic Temple sued Twitter falsely suggests that Twi TST engaged in a formal judicial complaint, which any layman knows is very costly. A reasonable reader of this sentence would expect that the suit cost TST a lot of money. In truth, TST invited an administrative mediation process through the Massachusetts Commission Against Discrimination. The matter was covered pro bono. No money was expended. We're complaining to the term sued because it implies we spent money. But how's that hurt our reputation? I don't. Okay. Second, TST began this process because Twitter permanently banned the account where the article claims it was temporarily suspended. Eh. A reasonable reader would distinguish between a permanent ban and a temporary one. The former justifies legal action, the latter does not. According to whom, incidentally? Because why wouldn't it necessarily justify legal action for a temporary ban any more than a permanent one? I don't know. Third, the sentence falsely implies that the Satanic Temple raising the issue against Twitter ensure the sole personal benefit of Greaves. This is missing necessary context. Twitter suspended the account along with Greaves' account. Social media is critical to the Satanic's ability to propagate its message. So Satanic Temple had an obvious organic in organizational interest in maintaining its own account. The same is true for the Grievous account. Grievous is a TST primary spokesman. If he's no longer a Twitter account, he's unable, his ability to perform the role is diminished, causing harm to the organization. Without necessary context, the statement is defamatory. It charges TST with financial fraud in the form of expending TST funds to fuel decision makers' personal vendetta. I mean, I, I don't know that that's really that far off. One of the things in defamation law that you have to think about is how much difference is there between the false statement and the pleaded truth? How much difference would it create in the listener's mind? Right. You can say a statement's false, but if you say then here is the truth and it doesn't create a difference in the listener's mind, then it doesn't matter. So, like, is there really enough daylight there to say that this is I mean, I, I mean, I, I OK, uh, the, the Satanic Temple has problems. The article states that he, Jinx Strange, a.k.a. Paul Milleron, soon left the group, then was leaked material about leaders posing happily with major alt-right media figures. Well, there's a shocker for you. The Satanic Temple is part of the alt-right. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. This statement is partly a repeated and previously false statement that TST is secretly affiliated with the alt-right. The statement asserts pr two previously false allegations. TST engages in sexual abuse and cover-up of the abuse. And TST engages in financial fraud and excommunication for members and for inquiring about financial fraud. You know, as long as we're at it, we might as well talk about it at this point in the article. It's not 100% clear you can defame TST, the Satanic Temple, because you can't really defame a religion. That's not really a thing. You can't defame a religion. Right? You, can't, you can't defame a, 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 yeah. And so you're trying to say that like TST is a business entity and you're defaming TST, the business entity, but TST, the business entity is a religion. So I'm not 100% sure it's possible to defame the satanic church. The claim states the satanic temple recently made some significant structural changes and apparently in an effort to appear to be more like a mainstream church. The claim that the, the Satanic Temple made these changes in an effort to appear like a mainstream church is false. In fact, the structural changes are designed to increase membership opportunity, to, persist, to, to participate in plan, planning organizational activities, participate in organizational governance, and provide ministerial services. I mean, I, I mean, come on. There's, there's difference between those two things? I mean, really? In the context of addressing the Satanic Temple's religious reproduction rights litigation against Texas, the article states it's not clear whether the Satanic Temple actually practices abortion as a religious ritual. 
The claim may be a legal tactic or political theory. theory. And then they say, the statement falsely suggests that the, the Satanic Church defrauded the courts by filing a lawsuit which is predicated on misrepresenting the Satanic Temple's religious practice. In fact, it is clear the Satanic Temple actually practices abortion as a religious rit ritual. This is a matter of public record. I, I would ask how this necessarily 100% squares with one of the tenets of the Satanic Temple, which is that every body is in violence. But, you know, who am I to question the precepts of the Satanic Temple? Okay, I mean, ritualistic abortions, okay, I mean, makes sense, I guess, if they're doing the orgies, okay, I, I don't know. The article states that before the defendants in the other action hacked the Facebook pages, bit by bit, items critical of the Satanic Church showed up in the Seattle chapter's Facebook page. And in March 2020, according to the lawsuit, the defendants went rogue. The statements assert that the defendants were posting these items critical of the Satanic Temple before March of 2020, and the defendants were removed from their advocacy positions because they were posting these items. Both these assertions are false. First, the defendants did not post items that are critical of them until after they stole the page in March of 2020. So they got the timeline a little wrong. You really want to go after them because of the timeline? Second, the statement falsely implies that items critical of the Satanic Temple had something to do with the removal of the defendants from their position as advisory council. In fact, they were removed because they were inflaming interpersonal conflicts within the advisory council. They are repeatedly operating TST social media to endorse leftist politics as opposed to Satanism. The statement falsely asserts that the original complaint was dismissed because you're, you are allowed to criticize religion. No part of the order of dismissal turns on the notion that there is a free speech right to criticize religion. In fact, the, defend, the defamation claim was dismissed because of judicial abstention doctrine under which civil courts are not allowed to resolve the truth of fa falsely of questions of religious doctrine. Those are kind of the same thing, right? I mean, again, it's like one of the problems of can you defame a church or can you defame things about a church is like the courts can't get into the internal aspects of churches for very obvious reasons. So like they can't adjudicate whether or not these things are defamatory because they can't decide what really happened inside the internal mechanisms of a church. So yeah, I mean, it's like, okay. The statement falsely implies that the TST lawsuit is premised on the claim that TST is above criticism. It, it might well be, to, to be quite honest. Uh, also, uh, just on a purely like technical level, there is the idea of defamation proof, right? There is the idea that, uh, that someone's reputation is so bad that it's impossible to defame them anymore. And I mean, you did call yourself the satanic temple. If it's not about doctrinal matters, but factual matters relating to a mystery of the church. No, see, like, no, church, no, courts, courts, dry, courts avoid this like big red X. Like they are not going to get into any of this crap about it. It's not like, no, we're just saying it's all doctrinal, right? We're not going to say about who fired who because of what reason or whatever. We are not getting into this bullshit. We are not going to go inside of a church and try to figure out why someone really followed someone else in terms of what really happened or who said what to whom. We are just a big red X inside of religion, you know, whole establishment clause. No, we are not going to start adjudicating what happened inside the confines of a church organization. Just no, no, leave us alone. We don't want to be involved. The statement is false on three fronts. First, it falsely asserts that TST engages in official orgies, which is a charge of sexual misconduct. No, it's not. Why would why would a charge of an orgy be a charge of sexual misconduct? The implication that the Satanic Temple has engaged in some sort of financial fraud or crime to justify an audit or other legal action by a state attorney general is plainly false because until the Newsweek article issued, no member of the press and no attorney general has credited the claims. I, 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 what? Okay, so now we have to get into the question of whether the Satanic Temple, which is a religion with chapters both in Salem, where they're headquartered, and elsewhere in the nation. We have to get into the question of whether or not the Satanic Temple, a religion, is a public or private figure. Okay, let's argue about whether or not the Satanic Temple 
a religion with chapters and, you know, services and websites and all the rest of it. Let's argue about whether or not it's a public figure. Sure. It's a private figure because it's not a household name. When juxtaposed and arranged as defended in the article, the article creates a false impression just. The plaintiff committed illegal behaviors and they engaged in both unethical behaviors and a moral personal behaviors all described above. This doesn't even make sense because uh, because a because a moral personal behavior. You're a church. What is a moral personal behavior? That's one of the things churches do is decide what's moral or not. So amoral according to whom? This includes without limitation that TST engages in sexual misconduct that they covered this up the sexual abuse. They engaged in abusive litigation practices to force former members into bankruptcy. They filed a fraudulent federal lawsuit and lies about religious rituals, which apparently includes the abortion. Defendants acted under no privilege in publishing the statements, impressions, and gist in the article. To the extent there was any privilege available, it was abused. This is because defendants engaged in a sham investigation into the details of the article, waiting until the 11th hour to verify details of the story with plaintiff, and then after plaintiff provided or offered to provide evidence rebutting defendants' preconceived narrative, defendants either outright lied or created impression or just they knew was false. I'm not seeing this lawsuit really going anywhere, I have to say. Accordingly, and although not necessary to sustain defamation claim because TST is a private figure, there is no way on God's green earth or Satan's red earth that tst is a private figure you are not a private figure you have a religion defendants published their statements with actual malice they knew that statements just impression were false or a minimum in fact entertained serious doubts about their truth as evidenced by a provision of information or at least make information that make it incumbent on defendant to inquire further, demonstrate a degree of malice recklessness in addition to ordinary negligence in publishing the false statements just in impressions. I think Newsweek is going to destroy them. That's what I think is going to happen in this lawsuit. So, yeah. In an effort to quantify the reputational harm, consider that a one-page advertisement in Newsweek costs $151,650. The article's har more harmful to TST than an advertisement because the public trusts face assert a news publication more facts than assert an advertisement. The article purports to be news, so it has an inverse effect as an advertisement. Therefore, it believes its reputational harm is no less than $150,000. Uh -huh. I mean, okay. And then we want a jury trial. That should be good. Let's get a jury trial together and ask them whether or not the satanic temple has been defamed. Thus, that brings us to the end of the coverage of the case of the satanic temple versus Newsweek. Newsweek reported on the satanic temple, alleging that they have done some many bad things. Sexual misconduct and, uh, you know, sexual uh, and hiding the sexual misconduct and also some tax issues and stuff and other issues. And uh, the Satanic Temple wants to sue them for publishing these statements from the false members or from, from their former members because they have grudges and stuff. And and also because orgies apparently imply sexual misconduct or something, but uh, whatever. Yeah, I don't see this lawsuit going anywhere. Um, the judicial abstention doctrine for getting involved in, in, in internal church affairs seems, yeah. And there's no way on this earth that the Satanic Temple is a private organization. And how would you even begin to show the actual malice needed? When you have these other organ with these people saying what they said about their own time in the Satanic Temple, and you have multiple different sources telling you the same thing. I mean, the Satanic Temple may say a different story, but you know, that's not what actual mouse looks like. So, but uh, we'll continue to follow this, and uh, you know, um, I, I don't know what's going on at the Satanic Church, but maybe that's the way to go versus the Satanic Temple. Couldn't say, at least for a moment. That brings us to the end of the discussion of the story. Thank you so much for being part of the Uncivil Law family. If you enjoyed this legal education content, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow. We appreciate your continuing support. Until later, my friends, cheers and goodbye.